Hello friends, in this video we will see one of the important and very interesting question and the question is this. You can note that the Fibonacci series is given as 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. Now two points you have to consider in this. First it is starting from 1 and not 0. And second you should know the concept of Fibonacci series like this two term should be given like the first two terms should be given to find the next term like the next term is equal to addition of previous two terms. Example 2 is nothing but 1 plus 1. Similarly, 3 is equal to addition of the previous two terms like 1 and 2. So add this 2, you will get the next term. To get 5, add the previous two terms. To get 8, add the previous two terms and so on. So these are the two important takeaway from the question. Correct? And you have to note that y of n we have to find. So how you can get the generalized equation? So to get the value of that, you have to understand the concept like the concept is to get the next term like 2 if you want to what you have to do add the previous two terms to get the value of 3 like the next term in the sequence what you have to do add the previous two value that is 1 plus 2 to get the next value that is 5 what you have to do add the previous two value that is 2 plus 3 to get the value of 8 what you have to do add the previous two value that is 3 plus 5 so now you know the concept like the Fibonacci series says if you need the new term or let's say the next term. So new term is equal to addition of the previous two terms. Now you have to write that in the equation. Let's say that the our output y of n is equal to the addition of previous two terms. Now the question is how you can get 1 and 3 uh, sorry how you can get the first two terms. So the next concept is this two term should always be given. So our assumption is the first two terms like 1 and 1 are given and after that you have to get the generalized equation like the generalized equation starts right here because these two are should be given. So this two should be given and after that you will get the generalized equation. So let's say that output that here you will get the output correct that is y of n is equal to this two. So addition of this two uh, how you can say that let's say the inputs are x of n minus 1 plus x of n minus 2. So suppose now n starts here 0 then n is 1 then n is 2 here. So when n is 2 what you will get y of 2 is equal to x of so 1 plus x of then you will get 0. So x of 0 was this x of 1 was this so y of 2 would be 1 plus 1 that is 2. So this is correct. But let's check for the another logic like n is equal to 3. So n is equal to 3 means after this n is equal to 2 we will get n is equal to 3. So for n is equal to 3 you should get x of what is this uh, 3 minus 1 that is x of 2 plus x of 1. But the question is we only have x of 1 and x of 2. So it is not possible sorry sorry we only have x of 0 and x of 1. So it is not possible to get the value of x of 2 correct. So this generalized equation concept gone wrong. So how to get the generalized equation is the next question. So uh, this was the failure when you tried that x of 0 would be your first x of 1 would be your second term and after that you will start your generalized equation by y of n. What if I say that replace this x with y and keep this generalized equation as it is. So y of n would be equal to now y of n minus 1 plus y of n minus 2. So will this generalized equation fit every term? So let's see that. Now y of 0 is 1, y of 1 is equal to 1. These two terms are y of 0, y of 1. After that our generalized equation starts like y of n is equal to y of n minus 1 plus y of n minus 2. Now put n is equal to 2. So when you put n is equal to 2, you can see that you will get y of 1 plus y of 0. So the answer would be 2 for n is equal to 2. Now check for n is equal to 3. So you can note that this is y of 0. Now this is y of 1. Using the generalized equation you found y of 2. Now let's see for n is equal to 3. Now n is equal to 3. y of 3 is equal to y of 2 plus y of 1. So y of 2 plus y of 1. Yes. So you can get the value of y or y of 3. And this way this generalized equation will satisfy everything. So what I wanted to say from this is x of n would not be in this equation it would not fit in this logic so what would fit is this 
so that's what i wanted to say like in the exam you have to try so this way you will try in the exam you will figure out that this is wrong so at the end of the day what is important you try you fail and then again you check for another logic so this logic failed but we but then we tried another thing like if we change this x with y will this work and we found that correct so in this way the first step was only important like getting the generalized equation once you get that rest is the cake work so let's see the rest part so the rest part is now you have this y of n is equal to y of n minus 1 plus y of n minus 2 correct but you have assumed the initial conditions as y of 0 is 1 and y of 1 is 1 so you have to write that before applying your z transform since you have this initial conditions initial condition since you have that you have to apply here like when n is equal to 0 what will happen y of 0 would be equal to y of minus 1 plus y of minus 2 that would be equal to 1 because y of 0 value is 1 and we are using this as the generalized equation so the y of minus 1 plus y of minus 2 would also be equal to 1 also if we do n is equal to 1 we have y of 1 is equal to y of 0 plus y of minus 1 is equal to 1. So in this way you can take away that y of 0 and y of 1 is equal to 1 as we already mentioned. So also you can get that if y of 0 is 1 then y of minus 1 is equal to 0 because 1 plus y of minus 1 is equal to 1 so y of minus 1 is equal to 0. If y of minus 1 is equal to 0 y of minus 2 is equal to 1. So the extra term you got is this y of minus 2. So initial conditions are important because in z transform we have two types. When we apply z transform we have two types. One is initial condition with initial condition and one is without initial condition. Now in this question because initial conditions are this and after doing this we got two terms extra. So now you can apply the initial condition formula and this would be used in that. So let's see the initial condition formula. So this was our generalized equation. Now apply the z transform. What you will get y of z is equal to. Now since we are writing this with initial condition the answer would be z raised to minus 1 y of z plus all right y of minus 1. Now for this it would be z raised to minus 2 y of z plus z raised to minus 1 y of minus 1 plus y of minus 2. Now these two terms are added extra because we are writing this with initial condition. Now your question would be if there was no initial condition then this underlined part would be 0. Simple. Again the concept is if you are having the initial condition in the question you have to use this formula so let me write here with initial condition if you are asking that without initial condition then the underlying terms would be zero so this all would be gone only the answer would be this like z is to minus 1 y of z plus z is to minus 2 y of z now in our question we have this and we have already found y of minus 1 y of minus 2 so just plug in the values and you will get z raised to minus 1 y of z this is 0 then we will get this z raised to minus 2 y of z again this is 0 but this is 1 all right so this is the answer if you rearrange this you will get y of z as so the answer would be 1 minus z raised to minus 1 minus z raised to minus 2 now multiply divide with the highest power so that you will get the positive power of z and you can see the highest power is 2 so z square in the numerator and here we will get z square minus z minus 1 so this is y of z all right now you have to apply the partial fraction so our equation was y of z is equal to z square upon z min uh, z square minus z minus 1 correct so this was our equation now you have to apply the partial fraction so what you can do is first first point first factorize this factorize this equation so you will get some z minus p1 and z minus p2 first point Second point is you have to shift this 1z in the left hand side. So y of z by z is equal to z minus z minus p1 z minus p2. So this is z alright. So in this way you, you got this. First step was factorization of this equation. Let's say p1 p2 are, are the values alright after factorization. You can do that in calci as well. 
and after that you have to shift one z in the left hand side now you can apply the partial fraction like a by z minus p1 plus b by z minus p2 and solve this partial fraction to get the values of a and b and i hope you know how to solve the partial fraction i'm not co covering that in this video if you want one video on partial fraction do let me know in the comments all right so you will get the value of a as p1 by root 5 and b as p2 by root 5 now my next question is the p1 p2 value you will get as 1 plus root 5 by 2 after solving that in calc 1 minus root 5 by 2 so in this way you got the value of a b p1 p2 and you have to substitute that value here now once you substituted the value here what you can do is you have to write the again equation of y of z because this z was remained in the left hand side now put that in the right hand side so it would be something like a dot z by z minus p1 plus b into z by z minus p2 now apply the inverse z transform so that you can get the value of y of n and the formula is if we have z by z minus a in the z transform then inverse z transform would be a raised to n u of n all right again if the question has z by z minus a in the z transform the inverse z transform would be a raised to n u of n so the answer here would be a dot so p because instead of a we have here pole so p1 raised to n u of n and b times again same logic p2 raised to n u of n so this is the answer and you know the values of a and b just plug in here so this was one of the beautiful and important questions of all time of Fibonacci series and I have showed you what mistake you make because no professor tell you how you make mistake and how to recover from that alright because in exam the questions are random you you make mistake that's okay everybody make but how you can learn from the mistake is important so I showed you how you make mistake and how you can recover from that and once you get the generalized equation that was the important point rest is the cake part what you did after that you did the z transform you applied the partial fraction you did you did the inverse z transform and you get this answer y of n so i hope you liked the video if you did please do like share and subscribe so friends agar aapko meri video pasand aa rahi ho then do like this video share with your friends and subscribe to my youtube channel तो मिलते हैं अगली वीडियो में टिल देन टेक केयर दिस इज ट्रेनिक जैन पीस आउट